Chattanooga University opened its doors in 1886, women were right there beside the men. Unlike Vanderbilt, Swanee, and UT, UC accepted women, though it was over fierce objections. Some darkly warned that too much learning would masculinize young women and prevent them from fulfilling their destiny as wife and mother. But to say women were on equal footing in the early years would not be exactly true. Living in Old Maine, which housed dorms and all academic life, presented strict rules for the co-eds. They were not allowed to leave school grounds without permission from the preceptress, who also supervised their morals and manners. Men and women did attend class and chapel together and dine with one another, but were separated for study hall, literary societies, and prayer meetings. If a young woman spoke to a passing man from her dorm window, she received five demerits. And under no circumstances could members of the opposite sex visit one another in the dorms, not even brothers visiting sisters. Societal inhibitions may have ruled, but females were given equal footing in academics. Literary societies gave women a chance to explore social graces and practical experience, such as debating and extemporaneous speaking, which were considered part of a well-rounded education. On other campuses, literary societies had long since given way to Greek letter sororities, but not in Chattanooga. In fact, the faculty placed a five-year ban on secret societies, and it wasn't until 1921 that the first Greeks came to campus. By 1910, women had their own basketball team, prompting this comment in the school newspaper. The girls have had more enthusiasm in basketball than the boys, in spite of the handicap of having to use a central high school court situated two miles from the campus. The women of UTC did their part for the war effort in 1917, forming the Patriotic League Group of the University through the YWCA. They selected knitting as their main patriotic work. 23 young women turned into the Red Cross, 70 sweaters, 5 mufflers, 7 pair socks, 10 pairs wristlets, and 2 helmets. University women blossomed when World War II broke out. Virtually every able-bodied male student had joined the service, bringing enrollment down to a mere 339 students, mostly females. One staffer remarked, we've turned into a women's college, and those students selected the first woman to become president of the student body. But of the most significance, the vanishing male enrollment allowed programs to form a particular interest to women. A two-year program in home economics and secretarial science was formed in 1943. The following year, the university began offering basic science courses for preclinical students of nursing. Through those beginnings, the school branched out from the liberal arts to the applied arts and sciences, a milestone created by and for women that would bring the university into the 21st century of computational engineering, computer science and business, advanced nursing degrees, and the unfathomable sciences and discoveries of tomorrow. We've come a long way, baby, may be overused and trite, but it still rings true to where women have been and where we're going. The future may be a mystery, but not how we will get there. We know it will be through the efforts, plans, and hard work of UTC women doing their part to bring the university into the next 125 years, all the while remaining a light on a hill for all those who seek knowledge, enlightenment, and inspiration.